Hey, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's special program series, Women of the Cloud, brought to you by AWS. I'm your host for the program, Lisa Martin. Very pleased to welcome back one of our alumni to this special series, Dr. Tendu Yogurtsu joins us, the CTO of Precisely. Tendu, it's great to see you. It's been a while, but I'm glad that you're doing so well. Lisa, it's so great seeing you too, and thank you for having me. My pleasure. I want the audience to understand a little bit about you. Talk to me a little bit about you, about your role, and what are some of the great things that you're doing at Precisely. Of course, as CTO, my current role is uh, driving technology vision and innovation and also coming up with expansion strategies for Precisely's future growth. Precisely is a leader in data integrity. We deliver data with trust, uh, with maximum accuracy, consistency, and also with context. And uh, as a CTO, uh, keeping an eye on what's coming in the business space, what's coming up with the emerging uh, challenges is really key uh, for me. Prior to becoming CTO, I was general manager for the uh, sync sort of big big data business. And um, previously I had several engineering and R&D leadership roles. I also have a little bit of academia experience. I served as a part-time faculty in computer science uh, uh, department in a university. And uh, uh, I am a person who is very tuned to giving back to my community. So I'm currently serving as an advisory board member in the same university. And uh, I'm also serving as an advisor uh, board member for a venture capital firm. Um, and I take pride in uh, being a dedicated advocate for STEM education and STEM education for women in particular and girls in the underserved areas. You have such a great background. The breadth of your background, the experience that you have in the industry as well in academia is so impressive. I've known you a long time. I'd love the audience to get some recommendations from you. For those in the audience looking to grow and expand their careers in technology, what are some of the things that, you, that you've that you experienced that you would recommend people do? First, stay current. What is emerging today is going to be current very quickly, especially now we are seeing uh, more change and change at the uh, increased speed than ever. So keeping an eye on, on what's happening in the market. If you want to be marketable now, some of the things that I will say, we have shortage of skills with data science, data engineering, with uh, security, cybersecurity, with cloud, right? We are here talking about uh, cloud in particular. So there is a shortage of skills in the emerging uh, technologies. AI, ML, there's a shortage of skills also in the retiring technologies. So we are in this like a, a spectrum of a skills shortage. So stay tuned to what's coming up. That's one. And then the second piece is that the quicker you tie what you are doing to the goals of the business, whether that's revenue growth, whether that's re customer retention or cost optimization, you are more likely to grow in your career. You have to be able to articulate what you are doing and how that brings value to business, to your boss, to your customers. So that becomes an important one. And then the third one is giving back. Do something for the human in technology while being a human in technology. Uh, give back to your community, whether that community is uh, gender-based or whether it's your alumni, whether it's your uh, community, uh, social community in your neighborhood or uh, in your country or ethnicity, give back to your community. I think that's becoming really important. I think so too. I think that paying it forward is so critical. I'm sure that you have a, a long list of mentors and sponsors that have guided you along the way, giving back to the community, paying it forward, I think is so important for others who might be a few years behind us, or even maybe have been in tech for the same amount of time, but are looking to grow and expand their career. Having those mentors and sponsors of women who've been through the trenches is inspiring. It's so helpful. And it really is something that we need to do from a diversity perspective alone, right? Correct, correct. And uh, we have seen that. Uh, we have seen, for example, COVID impact in women in particular. 
uh, there were uh, studies done by girls who code an Accenture that showed that actually 50% of the women uh, uh, above age 35 uh, were actually dropping out of the technology. And uh, those uh, numbers are scary. However, on the other side, we have also seen incredible amount of uh, technology innovation during that time with cloud adoption increasing with the uh, uh, ability to actually work remotely if you are even uh, living in not so secure areas, for example, uh, that created more opportunities for women to come back to workforce as well. So we can turn the challenges to opportunities uh, and uh, watch out for those, uh, uh, I would say, tipping points. I love that you bring up such a great point. There are, so so the, the data doesn't lie, right? The data shows that there's a significant amount of churn for women in technology. But to your point, there are so many opportunities. You mentioned a minute ago, the skills gap. One of the things we talk about often on the Cube, and we're talking about cybersecurity, which is obviously it's a global risk for companies in every industry, is that there's massive opportunity for people of, of any type to be able to grow their skills. So knowing that there's trend, but there's also so much opportunity for women in technology to climb the ladder is kind of exciting, I think. It is. It is exciting. Talk to me a little bit about, I would love for the audience to understand some of your hands-on examples where you've really been successful helping organizations navigate digital transformation and their entry and success with cloud computing. What are some of those success stories that you're really proud of? Um, let me think about, first of all, what we are seeing is with the digital transformation in general, every single business, every single vertical is becoming a technology company. Telco companies are becoming a technology company. Financial services uh, are uh, becoming a technology company. And uh, uh, manufacturing is uh, becoming a technology company. So every business is becoming technology driven and data is the key. Data is the enabler for every single business. Uh, so when we think about the challenges, uh, one of the um, examples that I give, um, a big challenge for our customers is I can't find the critical data. I can't access it. What are my critical data elements? Because I have so high volumes uh, growing uh, exponentially. What are the critical data elements that I should care? And how do I access them? And we work uh, at precisely with 99 of Fortune 100. So we have 12,000 customers in uh, over 100 countries, uh, which means we have customers whose businesses are purely built on cloud clean slate. We also have uh, businesses who have very complex uh, set of data platforms. They have financial services, uh, insurance, for example, they have critical transactional workloads still running on mainframes, IBM I servers, SAP systems. So one of the challenges that we have, and uh, I work with uh, key customers is on how do we make data accessible for uh, advanced analytics in the cloud. Cloud opens a, a ton of uh, open source tools, uh, AI ML stack, uh, lots of uh, tools that actually uh, the companies can leverage for that analytics, in addition to elasticity, in addition to easy to set up infrastructure. So how do we make sure the data can be actually available from these transactional systems from mainframes at the speed that the business requires. So it's not just accessing data uh, at the speed uh, the business requires. One of our insurance customers, they actually created this uh, uh, data marketplace on Amazon Cloud. And the their challenge was to make sure they can bring the fresh data uh, on a, uh, uh, a nightly basis initially, and which became actually half an hour, every half an hour. So the speed of the business requirements have changed over time. We work with them very closely and also with the Amazon teams on enabling, uh, bringing uh, uh, data and workloads from the mainframes and executing in the uh, cloud. So that's one example. Another uh, big uh, challenge that we see is, can I trust my data? 
And uh, data integrity is more critical than ever. Uh, the quality of data actually, according to HBR, Harvard Business Review Survey, 47% of every new record of data has at least one critical data error. 47%. So imagine, I was talking with a manufacturing uh, uh, organization uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they were giving me an example. They have these uh, three-letter codes for uh, parts and uh, different chemicals they use in the manufacturing. And a single letter error caused a shutdown of the whole manufacturing line. Wow. So that kind of challenge, uh, how do I ensure that I can actually have uh, completeness of data, cleanness of data, and consistency in that data? Moreover, govern that on a continuous basis becomes uh, one of the use cases that we help customers. And in that particular case, actually, we help them uh, put a, a data governance framework and the data quality in their uh, manufacturing uh, line. It's becoming also critical for, for example, ESG, environment, social and governance, supply chain, monitoring the supply chain, uh, assessing uh, ESG metrics. We see that again. And then the third one, last one, uh, I will give an example because I think it's important. Hybrid cloud becoming critical. Yeah. Because uh, uh, there's a purist view for new companies. However, facilitating flexible deployment models and facilitating cloud and hybrid cloud is also uh, where we really uh, uh, we can help our customers. You brought up some amazingly critical points where it comes to data. You talked about, you know, a minute ago. Every company in every industry has to become a technology company. You could also say. Every company across every industry has to become a data company. They have to become a software company. But to your point, and what it sounds like precisely is really helping organizations to do is access the data, access data that has high integrity, data that, that is free of errors. Obviously, that's business critical. You talked about the the, the high percentage of, of errors that caused manufacturing shutdown. Businesses can't, can't have that. That could potentially be life-ending for an organization. So it sounds like what you're talking about, data accessibility, data integrity, data governance, and having all that all in real time is table stakes for businesses, whether it's your grocery store, your local coffee shop, a manufacturing company, an e-commerce company. It's table stakes globally these days. It is. And uh, you made a very uh, good point, actually, Lisa, uh, when you talked about the local coffee shop or the retail. One other interesting statistic is that almost 80% of every data has a location attribute. So when we talk about data integrity, we no longer talk about just accuracy and consistency of data. We also talk about context, right? Uh, when you are going, for example, uh, to a new town, you are probably getting some reminders about uh, where your favorite uh, coffee shop is or uh, what uh, uh, telco company has an office uh, in that particular town. Or if you're an insurance company and a hurricane is hitting uh, southern uh, uh, Florida, then you want to know how the path of that hurricane is going to impact your customers and predict the claims before they happen. Also understand the propensity of the potential customers that you don't yet have. So location and context, those additional attributes of demographics, visitations are uh, creating actually more confident uh, business insights. Absolutely. And, and as the consumer... We're becoming more and more demanding. We want to be able to transact things so easily, whether it's in our personal life, at the grocery store, at the cafe, or in our business life. So those demands from the customer are also really influencing the direction that companies need to go. And it's actually, I think it's quite exciting that the amount of personalization, the location data that you talked about that comes in there and really helps companies in every industry deliver these, the cloud can, these amazing unique personalized experiences that really drive business forward. We could talk about that all day long. I have no problem, but I want to get in our final minutes here to attend you. What do you see as in your crystal ball as next for the cloud? How do you see your role as CTO evolving? 
Sure. For what we are seeing in the cloud, I think we will start seeing more and more focus on sustainability, sustainable technologies and governance. Obviously, cloud migrations, cloud modernizations are helping with that. Uh, and we uh, we are seeing many of our customers, uh, they started uh, actually assessing the ESG supply chain and uh, reporting on metrics, whether it's the percentage of waste uh, or energy, uh, energy consumption. Also on the social metrics, on diversity, age distribution, and uh, uh, or, uh, as well as compliance piece. So sustainability governance, I think that will become one area. Second, security, we talked about it, security and data privacy. I think we will see more and more investments uh, around those, so cybersecurity uh, in particular, and ethical uh, uh, data access and uh, uh, ethics is uh, becoming a center uh, to everything we are doing as we have those personalized experiences and have more opportunities in the cloud. And the third one is uh, continued uh, automation uh, with AI, uh, ML, and uh, more focus on automation because the cloud enables that at scale. And uh, the work that we need to do is uh, too time intensive and too manual with the amount of data. Data is powering uh, every business. So automation is going to be an increased uh, uh, focus. How my role evolves with that? So I have this uh, uh, unique uh, combination. I have been open to nonlinear career paths uh, uh, throughout my uh, growth. Uh, so I have an understanding of how to innovate and build products that solve real business problems. I also have an understanding of how to sell them, build partnerships. Uh, that combined with uh, the scale of growth, the hyper growth that we have observed in precisely 10 times growth within the last 10 years through a combination of organic innovation and acquisitions uh, really uh, requires uh, speed of change. Uh, so change, implementing change at scale as well as at speed. So taking those and bringing them to the next challenge is uh, the evolution of my role. How do I bring those and uh, tackle, keep an eye on what's coming as a challenge in the industry and how they apply those uh, skills that I have developed uh, throughout my career to that next challenge and evolve with it, uh, bring the innovation to data, to cloud and the next challenge that we are going to see. There's so much on the horizon. It's there are certainly challenges, you know, within technology, but there's so much opportunity. You've done such a great job highlighting your career path, the the big impact that you're helping organizations make leveraging cloud and the opportunity that's there for the rest of us to really get in there, get our hands dirty and solve problems. And you, I always love our conversations. It's been such a pleasure having you back, back on the Cube. Thank you for joining us on this special program series today. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, also thanks to AWS for the opportunity. Absolutely. This is brought, brought to us by AWS. For Dr. Tendu Yugurtu, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube's special program series, Women of the Cloud. We thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.